morning. What a wonderful day it is. And God bless you as you spend few minutes with me at the feet of Jesus and listen to his voice. And let today's meditation gives you um, an encouragement to spend more time in the presence of God. And uh, yesterday we considered about the spiritual unconsciousness that people experience. And sometimes a spiritual loss and sometimes spiritual gain. And yesterday we considered Samson's life. He was unconscious of the fact that the Lord has left him. And that was a spiritual loss for him. And then today we are going to consider Moses, who experienced very positively a spiritual gain. He was unconscious of the fact that the glory of God was being reflected by his face. And so that's what we are going to meditate today. Our scripture passage is found in Exodus chapter 34, verse 9, 29. Please read this for yourself and uh, I will narrate the story. Moses had a choice to make when he was growing up in Pharaoh's palace as the son of the Pharaoh's sister. He knew he was a Hebrew. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were his ancestors. This understanding was instilled in him by his mother. Miraculously, you know the story, how his own mother brought him up on behalf of, of, of this princess. Because the princess found him floating in river Nile. And what a miraculous way that uh, the child was given back to his own mother without realizing that it was his own mother who was going to take care. And she not only got the privilege of having her own precious son in her lap and in her, in her arms day after day, and she was to keep him and bring him up just in the beginning of a few years. How many years it took for her to wean him, I do not know. Maybe four years, five years maximum. But within that short period of time, Moses' mother instilled in him the truth about himself, who he was. And who were his ancestors? And thus Moses knew and grew up with that knowledge that he was a Hebrew, he was not an Egyptian. And that truth remained him in him. And at the age of 40, he had a choice to make. He was crown prince of Egypt because he was very, very capable as a general in the army. He won many battles those days. And so Pharaoh crowned him as the next king. And so there was a throne and a crown waiting for him. And we'll have the privilege of being the world power those days. Egypt was a great power. And uh, he could have chosen that. But he did not choose to be known as the daughter of Pharaoh's sister. But on the other hand, he chose to leave Egypt and be among his people and suffer the shame and reproach of that choice. But God is no man's debtor, my friends. He made that choice honoring God and honoring his people. But he made mistake. 
at the age of 40, he thought he was going to be the deliverer of these people. And so he went out to see how things were going on. And in the process, he killed an Egyptian, which was known to others. And when the next day, when he came to know that someone has seen him killing the Egyptians and it is already reported, he ran for his life. He left Egypt and he came to Midian. And you know that story. And so, after his mother completed those years, he returned to the palace where he grew up as the son of Pharaoh. No son. He never forgot who he was. Remember, God had already marked him to be the deliverer of his people, Israel, from the land of Egypt. And when God's appointed time came, God himself appeared to Moses at Horeb. And uh, God was going to use him and bring, and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Moses thus became the deliverer and also the leader and the judge for the people of Israel for another 40 years. And God gave Moses his commandments, including the Ten Commandments. While receiving the commandments, Moses had to climb the mountain twice and each time a 40 days period. And, uh, and he was with God. 40 days and 40 nights. He was with God as God spoke to him. That's how he received all the commandments and the rules and regulations uh, by which they must be governed. In other words, God gave in the hands of Moses the constitution for the nation of Israel, including the Ten Commandments. Now, after the second 40 days session, he was coming down to the valley where the people were waiting for him. And when the people saw Moses climbing down the mountains and coming, they looked at him more closely and they were afraid. Because they saw his face was shining brilliantly and they did not know exactly what happened, but Moses knew. But Moses was unaware that his face was reflecting God's glory. And my friends, that is what I say, spiritual unconsciousness. Sometimes it can be because of the spiritual loss. As Samson, he did not know that the Lord had left him or the Spirit of God had left him. But here is Moses. He has gained much by being with God Almighty for 40 long days and nights. This is the second session. No food, no water, no sleep, nothing but sitting at the feet of God Almighty, face to face. And he listened every word that God was speaking to him. And when Moses realized that the people were scared, then he realized that his face was shining. And then he took a veil and covered his face, putting it over his head. And that's how the practice of the priest, whoever reads the, 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 the Old Testament scriptures in the synagogue or in the temple, wherever, they will always cover their head, covering their face. Because Moses was unaware or unconscious of his face reflecting the glory of God. And so when he noticed the reaction of the people down there seeing him, then he realized 
something was happening. And for 40 days, my friends, he spent his time there. In the presence of God, who the Bible says dwells in an unapproachable light. Moses looking at the glory of God for 40 days and 40 nights. But still he couldn't see the face of God. His face was being changed. And sitting and spending all the time, 24 hours of each day and thus 40 days. Beholding the brilliance of the glory, he had been changed into the same image. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. There it says, And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with the ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And later, Moses, he had one desire. And that one desire was, he wanted to see God's glory in all its fullness. And in order to see God's glory in all its fullness, he, had to, he was supposed to look at the face of God and that God could not allow him to look in the face because that fullness of glory would have, uh, would have, would have killed Moses. Because God himself said, God, he was pleading with God, God, show me your glory, show me your glory. And he persisted in that request. He kept on asking, you know, this Moses is amazing. He didn't care about name or fame or riches or kingdoms for himself, nothing. God was promising all kinds of things if he would only get out of his way because God wanted to destroy the people because of their sin they committed in the valley while Moses was up. You remember that story. And God told him, you get out of my way and I will make you a great name and I will make you a great kingdom and I will give you this and make you this and he was offering so many blessings. But Moses didn't care any of these blessings. He said, God, if you find favor with me, please show me your glory. And God himself said, that is an impossible thing. But I will do this for you. And so, <coughs> you know the story. God allowed Moses to look at the back of God, where he saw a diminished glory, which itself was brighter than anything that he could ever imagine. My friends, if you and I, if we are more often in the presence of God, who is holy, 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 holiness will develop itself within us. Quite unconsciously. And, and, and our Countenance will reflect the glory of God, the likeness of God. The countenance will change. And if we only spend time, more time, more time, more time each day in the presence of God, we can expect to reflect the glory of God. And people will notice the countenance. There is some change. You know, in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, verses 13 to 15, it is Jesus choosing the 12 apostles from among all his disciples. And the reason, the purpose of choosing you, there are two fold purposes. 
Number one was that they may be with him. Because he knew the secret of being like Jesus. Be with him. That was the first purpose for which disciples were chosen. And the second purpose was being with him, then they shall be sent out by him. Remember, going out is something very exciting and that's what people do. They are in a hurry to go out. But my friends, we must realize and understand the action of Jesus by giving this number one purpose of choosing disciples so that they may be with him. Why? Because only by being with him, you are going to know him, you are going to love him, you are going to understand him. And that is the way you are going to be like Jesus. And then from his presence, you go out into the world. And then you shall be a powerful witness and a channel of God's blessing. And with this, I conclude these two series of meditation, spiritual unconsciousness. Samson was unconscious of his spiritual loss and he suffered for it. Moses also was unconscious, but it was for his spiritual gain. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless you and me as we walk with the Lord Learn to be with him in meditation and in learning and listening to him. Looking at his face, our own faces shall be transformed. God bless you. He gives you the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. Live this day. This is a great day. Have a wonderful day. Amen.